The International Monetary Fund urged Lebanese officials to break an impasse and move ahead with reforms after a massive Beirut blast devastated the capital and caused the crisis hit country billions in damages. The talks have since hit a wall, with the IMF urging authorities to put in place a meaningful program to turn around the economy following Tuesday's explosion, which it called a disaster. The blast killed more than 130 people, wounded at least 5,000 others, and left 300,000 homeless, with a damage cost estimated to exceed 3 billion US dollars. U.S. Iran envoy Brian Hook is leaving his post, and U.S. Venezuela envoy Elliot Abrams will add Iran to his role following a transition period. Hawke's departure comes as the United Nations Security Council prepares to vote next week on a U.S. bid to extend an international arms embargo in Iran. Some diplomats have said the measure lacks support. Pompeo did not give a reason for Hawke's decision to leave. The Civil Protection Service said a magnitude 4.9 earthquake hit eastern Algeria, toppling three houses, damaging others and sending panicked people rushing into the streets, but there were no reports of casualties. The quake, which was followed by a 4.5 aftershock, hit Mela province some 350 kilometers east of the capital Algiers. Three homes, including a four-story villa, completely collapsed, while 31 other apartments partially collapsed. Leading container lines are diverting ships to Lebanon's smaller terminal of Tripoli after the devastating explosion at Beirut's port that killed 145 people also paralyzed vital trade. Lebanon, which imports almost all its uses, relies on container ships to bring in everything from refrigerated food cargoes to clothing and other consumer goods. There is no firm date for Beirut port to reopen and this is a strain on supply chains. The head of Lebanon's customs department said one of the country's main security agencies reported to the cabinet in the past year about the danger from explosive chemicals being stored at the port. Pedri Dahar told the Associated Press on Thursday that state security had been investigating the stockpile of ammonium nitrate for the past year. He said it raised reports about the danger to the cabinet, state prosecutor and other state institutions. The chemicals that went up in flames in Beirut's deadliest peacetime explosion arrived in the Lebanese capital seven years ago on a leaky Russian lease cargo ship that, according to its captain, should never have stopped there. The captain said the ship was carrying 2,750 tons of a highly combustible chemical from Georgia to Mozambique when the order came to divert to Beirut on its way through the Mediterranean. The crew was asked to load some heavy road equipment and take it to Jordan's port of Aqaba before resuming their journey into Africa, where the ammunition nitrate was to be delivered to an explosives manufacturer. Cyprus has located and questioned a Russian man named in multiple news reports as the owner of the ship that carried a cargo of ammonium nitrate abandoned in Beirut and that exploded in a devastating fireball. A Cyprus police spokesman said an individual, who he did not name, was questioned at his home in Cyprus on Thursday afternoon. There was a request from the Interpol Beirut to locate this person and ask certain questions related to the cargo. Egyptian Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri said Egypt and Greece signed an agreement designating an exclusive economic zone in the eastern Mediterranean between the two countries, an area containing promising oil and gas reserves. Shukri made the announcement at a joint press conference with his Greek counterpart. In Greece, diplomats said the deal effectively nullified an accord between Turkey and the government of national court in Libya. French President Emmanuel Macron promised aid to blast stricken Lebanon but reassured angry citizens reeling from a lethal explosion that killed 145 people that no blank checks will be given to its leaders unless they enact reforms. 
Speaking at a news conference at the end of a dramatic visit to Beirut, Macron called for an international inquiry into the devastating explosion that generated a systematic shock fill across the region, saying it was an urgent signal to carry out anti-corruption reforms demanded by a furious population. Dozens are still missing after Tuesday's explosion at the port that injured 5,000 people and left up to 250,000 without habitable homes, hammering a nation already staggering from economic meltdown and a surge in coronavirus cases. The Algerian Ministry of National Defense denounced allegations by some opposition parties abroad that a senior officer from the army asked for political asylum in Switzerland. Some individuals ran off abroad who indulged in disinformation and defamation, disseminated false information conceived in their imagination, claiming that the Major General Miftah Suad, previous commander of the Second Military Region, was on the run in one of the European countries and that he was prosecuted in Algeria. The Ministry of National Defense issued a statement on its website saying the ministry categorically denies these allegations spread by those Buzidu journalists who are themselves prosecuted by Algerian justice and are on the run abroad. Jordanian Minister of State for Media Affairs Amjad Adela has asserted that the government will fight against anyone who treasures instability and tensions in the country. In a press conference, Adela commented on the chaos that followed a protest for teachers in Karak in the south of the country. The chaos led to the injury of seven and the arrest of around 48 people. The minister stressed that the government won't go easy with anyone who offends the security guards and relevant bodies as they perform their tasks. Any financial, partisan or syndicate demand won't be fulfilled using this attitude but through dialogue and acceptance of others. Lebanon's diaspora estimated at nearly three times the size of the tiny country's population of 5 million has stepped up to provide assistance following the massive explosion that laid waste to the capital Beirut. Lebanese expats rushed to wire money to loved ones who lost their homes or were injured in the blast on Tuesday that killed at least 113 people, while others worked to create special funds to address the tragedy. Many Lebanese expats who almost all have loved ones or friends impacted by the disaster are also helping individually or have started online fundraisers. King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center KS Relief supported Lebanese medical teams and assisted people affected by Beirut port explosion. Subul Salam Relief Team, funded by KS Relief, went from north of Lebanon to Beirut to assist in the transportation of the wounded. Also, a specialized team from Al Amal Medical Center, funded by KS Relief, provided emergency health care services in Beirut. Cyprus said it would work with France to procure and develop arms and jointly train military personnel as part of a defense cooperation agreement. According to a statement, the 2017 agreement that came into force this month also aims to bolster security at sea and around offshore hydrocarbon drilling areas, improve crisis management and combat extremism and piracy. The agreement constitutes an important step forward in achieving the common goal of ensuring an environment of stability and security in the eastern Mediterranean. While Europe tightened virus restrictions to face the threat of a second wave of COVID-19, U.S. President Donald Trump found himself in the cross-chair of Facebook and Twitter because of a video in which he claims children are almost immune to the new coronavirus. The worldwide death toll crossed 700,000 as the two U.S. social media giants took action against Trump for spreading what they called misinformation about the virus. Several European countries and cities reimposed tighter restrictions, including a wake-up week in Greece and new face masks and quarantine rules elsewhere.